Welcome back, everybody. Today we're in chapter 23, and we're going to be looking today at what we call the correlation coefficients. Now, we're looking at relationships, and we have been looking at relationships in the past, but if you remember, we looked at primarily one variable. Today, we're going to be looking at what we call bivariate uh, uh, analysis which means we're going to be looking at models that help us to describe relationships between two variables. For instance, what if you wanted to know if uh, product placement in a store and sales had any type of correlation? That means if I place the product in a certain place in a store, will I see an increase or a decrease in sales? That's the type of thing that the correlation coefficient uh, uh, type of analysis will help us to realize. Also, you could do this in ministry. If I change the style of music, will I see an increase or decrease or no change whatsoever in the amount of congregation members? So you can use this in ministry. You can use it in uh, uh, the professional world as well. So let's go ahead and take a look today at bivariate analysis using the correlation coefficient model. Okay, welcome back everybody. And today we're going to be in chapter 23, which discusses bivariate statistical analysis. Now what we're looking at today, uh, we can say are measures of association. Now you have several models here, but the one that I'm going to talk about uh, primarily out of this chapter is what we call the correlation coefficient and specifically the Pearson R. Now in the beginning of your chapter you had the little vignette about bringing your work home uh, to your home. So how does the relationship between work and home life uh, correlate and some people would say, well, there's no correlation at all. And let me talk about correlations first before we begin. You really have three types of correlations. You either have a positive correlation, which, and we've talked about this before in the past, but a positive correlation is one thing goes up or down, uh, the other will follow suit. It will go up or down. You have negative correlation which is your textbook here in chapter 23, which, by the way, open up. We're on page 560. Uh, a negative correlation is as one goes up, you have a mirror effect. The other goes down, and then you have no correlation. Now, having uh, got that out, let's take a look here at what they say in the vignette. They uh, wanted to look at how work and home life interrelate, and this would be an example of looking at measures of association. How does work and home life pan out? How does scheduling of work and morale uh, relate? <clears throat> you could use that at church. You could use this in organizations. There are all types of associations that we as researchers can look at and businesses would want you to look at as well. So uh, here, the, what they call the WFC, conflict that results when the demands and responsibilities of one role spill over into the other role. Researchers have examined uh, may work uh, and family characteristics, independent variables that can predict WFC, which is a dependent variable. So you would have the family characteristics and work characteristics as an independent variable and how conflict emerges from that, that would be the dependent variable. So here you're doing pretty much the same thing that we've looked at in the past uh, when we've talked about associations and when we do these we're looking at less than interval uh, relationships. If you remember we had the interval, we had the ratio, we had the nominal and the ordinal type of data, the uh, ratio and less than uh, uh, less than interval ratio or less than interval data would be used. Uh, this is what you would use those numbers for. Now the basics measures of association refers to a number of bivariate statistical techniques used to measure the strength of a relationship between two variables. Uh, variables. If you remember, bi means two, so we're looking at two. And the chi-square Test provides information about whether two or more less than interval variables are interrelated. 
Uh, correlation analysis is most appropriate for interval or ratio variables. Regression can accommodate either less than interval or interval independent variables, but the dependent variable must be uh, continuous. Now, what does all this say? Well, this is the diagram that kind of explains all of this to you. Uh, what type of measurement uh, should you be using? Well, let's take a look here. For the nominal, we would take a look maybe does nationality uh, relate to color preference? So that would be a relationship or an association. And the type of study that you would choose, the model, would be the chi-square uh, test, uh, a cross-tabulation with the chi-square test. What about ordinal data? Example, does importance ranking relate to brand choice? And here you would use the chi-square, cross-tabulation with chi-square, or the Spearman rank correlation. Now on interval ratios, you're going to look, does number of radio spots relate to unit sales? Uh, and this is a direct marketing type of scenario. And I've used this before uh, when we're trying to find out the best way to spend our money on advertising and marketing. We want to be able to study whether or not the radio spots are directly relating to sales. So how do we do that? We use the Pearson R our simple regression analysis. Now, the correlation coefficient, that's a statistical measure. And what it does is that it measures the covariation or association between two at least interval variables. And again, what we want to look at is one goes up, the other should go down if it's a negative correlation. Positive correlation is one goes up, the other goes up, or there can be no correlation at all. Now, when we're looking at this, we're really looking at what we call here covariance. And that's the extent to which two variables are associated systematically with each other. Now, if you have, as your textbook talks about here on page 562, the correlation coefficient, R, ranges from negative 1.0 to positive 1.0. If the value of R equals positive 1.0, a perfect positive relationship exists. Now, if the value of R equals negative 1.0 or less, a perfect negative relationship exists. So the implication is that one variable is a mirror image of the other. As one goes up, the other part or the other one goes down in proportion and vice versa. And if there's no correlation, R will equal to zero. Now this is the formula here. It's uh, fairly comprehensive as you can see, but when you think it out, and uh, we'll take a look here in just a minute, uh, of how this formula plays out, uh, uh, but as you can see, what you're looking at is the, the uh, Pearson R, which is this, is equal to the expectation or the sum of x variable minus bar x multiplied by y variable minus bar y divided by the square root of the expectation or the sum of xi, our x variable, minus bar x squared times the sum of a y variable minus bar y squared. And as you can see on page 565, they give you the example of that. Now, I don't have this example in the slide, but take a look here at the table. Now you have, and they're looking at the uh, relationship between unemployment rate and the number of hours uh, that are worked. So here you see unemployment rates, that's X, and you see the different uh, unemployment rates as you go down the list. 
and then you have the number of hours worked, which is Y. And you see here at the, uh, in the second column, all of the number of hours worked per, I guess, individual. Now, the way the formula works, now let's take a look at the formula. This is where we're at right now on the table. X variable minus bar X. So the unemployment rate minus bar X. So you would take the mean of X and then you would take the variable minus the mean of X and then you would go down the list. And here at the very bottom, it gives you the value of uh, 17.8379. Now, the mean of X right above it is 4.99. The mean of Y is 40.31. So you have to get the, the numbers. You have to get the means of each one. And then you just go down the list. Now, the second part is just the same. But you do it with Y. You would take uh, the Y variable, each one, minus the mean of Y, and just go down the list again. Now, then you would have here y variable minus the mean of y squared. And you do that for each one of these um, columns, or for each one of these cells going down this column. And then when you get all of that, you would have the, uh, the mean of variable x minus x bar uh, multiplied by the mean of y variable minus xy, or the bar y, excuse me. And then you have those numbers. So, and now well, let's go back down to the very bottom again. You have x bar, 4.99, bar y is 40.31. You have the sum or the expectation of uh, x variable minus x bar squared is equal to 17.8379. You do the same for Y, which is 5.5899. And then you take the sum of the X uh, variable minus the X bar multiplied by Y variable minus bar Y, and you have negative 6.3389. Now, if you go down here to the very end, so the Pearson R, you would take all of these numbers. You would take negative 6.3389 divided by the square root of the x variable multiplied by the y variables is equal to, and you see the number, negative 6.3389 divided by the square root of 99.712 is equal to point six, negative 0.635. Now, what does that really tell us? Um, this indicates an inverse or negative relationship. When number of hours goes up, unemployment goes down. Now, you would really think that as numbers go up, unemployment goes down. That's, as the textbook says, as an intuitive uh, assessment of everything. But you can't always assume what looks like common sense. Uh, this way, using statistical analysis, will be able to help you in being able to statistically determine how these relationships occur. Oftentimes, when you just assume something, uh, there may be other variables coming into play that you're not expecting. So you want to make sure that if you're going to be positive about something, about the correlation, that you have it right and that uh, uh, it's backed up by your statistics. Now, there's a simple correlation, uh, ranges from one, positive one to negative one. We've already talked about that. And then the correlation coefficient for two variables, X and Y, you see this here. And uh, the, uh, uh, the correlation coefficient is equal to the covariance, that's the relationship of X and Y, divided by the square root of the variance of X multiplied by the variance of Y. Uh, and that would be your outcome there. So that's really the correlation coefficient. And this can help you determine what relationships you, um, you will come up with or 
encounter as you do your research on various aspects of your business. Now, just to give you a, a, an example of what these relationships look like, in Exhibit 23-2, you see a scattergram. Uh, this kind of illustrates where we're at. Now, the lower the value, the less correlation that you have. Now, notice here, this equals to 30, R equals to 0.30. And you see here, this is a low positive correlation. How do we know that? Because the dots or the plots are all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason. But notice here, at point 80, as you get closer to 1, these plots become more defined. And you see a high correlation here. And instead of going this way, we see it going this way, so we know this is a positive correlation. And now a perfect correlation is when it's just pinpoint accurate. It's just a straight line. And now that's a positive, perfect correlation. Now when R is at zero, you see again, no correlation. There's no rhyme or reason. It's all over the place. But notice here, it's going in this direction. So at negative 60, we start to see here a pattern emerging where they're grouping together and going in a negative correlated direction. And then here at negative one zero, just as you see up here, you have that down here, but going in the opposite direction. So that would be an example of a perfect negative correlation. Now the final slide today looks at correlation, covariance, and causation. Now when two variables covariate, they display concomitant variation. The systematic covariation does not in and of itself establish causality, and that's important. For instance, as you see here, the rooster crows and the, rise, uh, the sun rises. Uh, that doesn't mean that the rooster causes the sun to rise. You just see a relationship. And so oftentimes, folks, when you are looking at doing uh, relationship types of, uh, uh, of studies, don't look at it as causation. What you're seeing is that as one rises, another falls, or as one rises, another rises. So you're not looking at cause, you're looking at relationships. Now causation is a whole different other area. But don't assume that just by using the correlation coefficient that you can bring about and explain causality. These are just explaining and describing to you the relationships that occur as we take a look at all of these variables and we plot them. And then from that plot, we can see by the results or by the, the sum of whether or not those variables either relate uh, in, a, in a certain manner or direction or they don't relate at all. Today we saw how we can analyze the relationships between two variables and find out whether or not there's a positive, a negative, or no correlation using the Pearson R, which is a correlation coefficient. Well, that's all we have for today. You have a good rest of the day, and we'll pick back up tomorrow.